in the last videos we talked about the directly acting cholinergic drug and in this video we are going to talk about the indirectly acting cholinergic drugs or they are called anticholinesterase so let's have one neuron right this is one neuron which can produce acetylcholine and let's have another neuron which has a nicotinic receptor in the synaptic cleft we are going to have a special enzyme called anticholinesterase this anticholinesterase has two cutters which can split acetylcholine into two parts with the help of water right so it needs water when acetylcholine comes and let, let's say this is acetylcholine this binds over the anticholinesterase so once it binds and if we provide water this acetylcholine esterase can hydrolyze the uh, acetylcholine so that acetylcholine will break down into acetic acid and choline and choline can be further reuptaken by the nerve endings and can be resynthesized in the nerve endings broadly anticholine esterases are also divided into two groups they are reversible anticholine esterases and another group is irreversible irreversible anticholinesterases in the reversible anticholinesterases the drugs will have carbamate group and in irreversible anticholinesterases the drug will have phosphate group right some of the irreversible anticholinesterases also have carbamate group in the structure but mainly most of the irreversible anticholine esterases are having phosphate in their structure but the reversible anticholine esterases we have following drugs they are physostigmin, neostigmin, pyridostigmin and atrophonium one gross difference between these all drugs is that physostigmin is a tertiary amine and all other drugs are quaternary amine right this can explain a lot of things since physostigmin is tertiary amine it is lipid soluble so that it can cross blood brain barrier so that it can have cns effect whereas quaternary amine are lipid insoluble so that uh, they won't be able to cross blood brain barrier so they are not going to have a cns effect Another thing is since physostigmin is lipid soluble it can work very very well in ganglias because ganglias have fat around them so physostigmin can easily cross that fat since it is lipid soluble and can very well work on the ganglias but these drugs they are because uh, lipid insoluble cannot work very well on the ganglias but can work very well in the neuromuscular junction Atrophonium is having a special group uh, alcohol which uh, makes them water soluble. One more thing about physostigmin is that it is obtained from plant product so it is an alkaloid and all other drugs are synthetic. Right. And irreversible anticholine esterases are let's name them they are isofluorophate ecothiophate melathion and parathion these are the contents of the insecticides and pesticides these are not drugs which are used these are the gross contents of the insecticides and pesticides and are of importance of poisoning and management of poisoning now let's first see how acetylcholine esterases work let's have one acetylcholine esterase it has two cutters one cutter will have an ionic site and other will have asteric site this is smiling acetylcholine esterase now let's see how acetylcholine will be hydrolyzed by this acetylcholine esterase let's say this is the acetylcholine once acetylcholine 
bind to the anticholine esterases the anticholine esterases it's said to be acetylated right this complex of acetylcholine esterases with acetylcholine is called acetylated anticholine esterases now once if we want to break the acetylcholine into acetic acid and choline this acetylcholine would need water so once we provide water to acetylcholine esterases the acetylcholine will get hydrolyzed and the acetic acid and the choline component of the acetylcholine will be separated so once water is provided the acetic acid and the choline gets separated so this is how the acetylcholine gets hydrolyzed now let's see how uh, drugs like carbamates or phosphate will work on acetylcholine esterases so let's have another acetylcholine esterase to cutter next thing will act on acetylcholine esterase is the carbamate group right so this is the carbamate group and carbamate group obviously contain the drug like physostigmine or neostigmine or pyridostigmine so once it will bind with acetylcholine esterase to make a labile covalent bond so it will slightly block slightly get complexed with the acetylcholine esterases slightly form complex with the acetylcholine esterases and it won't easily move out but if you give water to this acetylcholine esterase uh, it won't respond to water as fast as acetylcholine was hydrolyzed it would take some time and after that it will get hydrolyzed and it would go away so the difference between carbamates and acetylcholine on the acetylcholine esterases is, is that acetylcholine is readily hydrolyzed and it gets separated into acetic acid and choline readily and acetylcholine esterases is freed and acetylcholine esterase now can work on the another acetylcholine whereas if you give drug like physostigmine or neostigmine it would make a labile covalent bond with acetylcholine esterases it won't get readily hydrolyzed by water but it would take some time like say about 30 minutes and after that so this drug like neostigmine or physostigmine can be broken down and acetylcholine esterases will be now free now let's find out how phosphates or irreversible anticholine esterases work on acetylcholine esterases and irreversible anticholine esterases the problem is when it binds to acetylcholine esterases they make a strong covalent bond right so with acetylcholine esterases see how acetylcholine esterases is crying now they will make a strong covalent bond and this strong covalent bond can take up to weak to make this acetylcholine esterases free the only way to free this acetylcholine esterases is you give this drugs like oxynes and this oxyne will work on this acetylcholine esterases and can pull the phosphate groups